Greetings, this is August 15th, early in the afternoon, and the sky's been quite red lately uh, in the morning, in the evening, and uh, it was getting a little hard to spot my rooster. Fortunately, he comes with a built-in audio alarm. I'd like to take a look at several areas on infrared. There's been some change, some new development. The Shovel Lake fire north of Fort Fraser. The fires on the Nechaco Plateau appear to have experienced some growth eastward. There's also a couple of lightning caused fires just outside of Olala. And uh, let's take a look at Vancouver Island. First, let's go to the Shovel Lake fire. This is just to the west of Fort Fraser. It uh, looks like it's over 50,000 hectares at this point. And we're going to run through some animation from August 12th through to the 14th and just see what the change has been. August 13th, August 14th. Dramatic increase in size to the east-southeast. And if we look at BC Wildfires mapping system, go to Fire R11498. And this started on July 27th. Uh, it was caused by a person and Click on the more info and we can get a fairly detailed write-up for today, August 15th. Uh, crews have been working on the north. Uh, there's a PNG pipeline up there. Fire grew on the south side of Stern Lake and crews were able to get a guard in and stop that progress. So uh, very good work on their part in order to limit this spread. Here we are with another close up and we're going to take a look at the map on the NRC's infrared M3 system from August 12th to the 15th. This is August 12th, August 13th, August 14th, and today August 15th. We can see that uh, area on the southeast corner. Uh, that's where the progress was stopped by wildfire crews. Now let's roll over to the NRC's beta system and see where the most recent activity has occurred. We're looking at a 24-hour map. These are all the infrared being displayed for the last 24 hours and now it's rolled into just the 12-hour maps and now the last six hours. So this gives us an idea of where the most volatility is, where the most action is occurring on those fire flanks. I'm also seeing a lot of controlled infrared signatures which could indicate uh, a control strategy at work on the six hour map. So there could be back burning in specific fire pockets. We've rolled back into the 12 hour maps and showing just how much activity is going on on those eastern flanks as this fire seems to follow wind patterns. We're looking at windy now and uh, four kilometers from the west this is down in the river valley and up on the hillsides a little bit more velocity uh, probably it's showing four kilometers from the northwest here pushing the fire on uh, southeasterly direction while we're in this region, I'd like to jump over to Quenelle. Uh, 10 kilometers an hour coming from the north. It's up on the hills and then it kind of fans down to either side. And moving just to the west, uh, this is near Nazco. We can see this almost a whirlwind of uh, air currents going in a circle uh, clockwise with a uh, relative calm in the center. Kind of an uh, interesting weather phenomenon going on there. Now let's move to the Okanagan, the Ashnola. This is an area north of Karameas. Karameas has been experiencing a very large fire uh, that almost pushed its way down into the U.S. There's a couple of lightning strikes. One's been around for a few days. One just happened uh, yesterday, today. And we're seeing some expansion all the way up to 20 hectares. Uh, that's uh, grown quite a bit. It's in a mountainous, dry arid region up on the hillsides and the new fire is just kilometers north of Old Tom Creek fire which uh, happened on the 11th so this may be lightning that uh, was ignited 
when the storm went through a few days ago and now it's beginning to pop up. It's found new oxygen. The smoldering has turned into combustion. We're back looking at the NRC's beta system data. This is showing infrared hotspots for the last 24 hours. We see some on the northern flank of uh, the fire just south of Karameas. This may give us an indication of the direction and we can see there's uh, maybe a dozen hot spots to the west of Olala and then rolling into the 6 and 12 hour maps still a lot of activity very recently so overall if you're in the area you want to pay very close attention to wind directions and wind speed uh, right now I'm showing zero kilometers an hour. However, there are some western flows, 11 kilometers an hour, just on the hillside. We can also see that the folks in Princeton, about center of your screen, uh, experiencing a lull in the wind speed right now, but all around them on the hillsides, the wind is maintaining a, a fairly brisk clip. Uh, there should be gusts in the afternoon, that 3 o'clock breeze. And this is to show you that uh, weather conditions and wind conditions can be quite localized. We've jumped over to a screen of the Lower Mainland on BC Wildfire Service map. Uh, there's a couple of fires showing on this screen. Uh, one's back over in uh, Eastgate Manning Park. It's under a hectare. It started yesterday. Uh, no cause as of yet. Uh, I suspect lightning. The other is near Agassiz at the southeast end of uh, Harrison Lake. This is the Mount Hicks fire. It's up to 120 hectares and this was caused by a human. This fire was discovered on August 8th, so it's been running for a week now. Let's jump over to the island. Uh, several fires have popped up. I'm seeing six new ones. These are the red dots and they're overlaying older fires, uh, approximately 20 to 30 of them, a very congested area, rugged terrain, and virtually all of these have been caused by lightning. We are looking at the NRC's beta system infrared data for the last 24 hours, and we're going to scroll back to the last 6 to 12 hours to see the most recent activity. There is still a lot of volatility, but these new infrared seem to be within the existing fire perimeters. I'm not seeing dramatic uh, movement to the southeast or to the east like we saw in the fires up on the Nechaco Plateau. So if in this region, north, central, Vancouver Island, you're traveling the highway, check with BC Wildfire, check with Dry BC, and make sure your routes are all accessible. And jumping over to Windy, I'm seeing localized wind patterns here as well. Uh, the marker is showing from the north, 11 kilometers an hour. But if we move towards the center of the island from the north, 2 kilometers an hour. So wind speeds can pick up on the ridges, on the hilltops, out on uh, the plateaus. And with these swirling wind patterns, we can experience a completely different wind direction 10, 15 kilometers away. So please be safe, everyone. Know your position, know multiple escape routes and directions of travel depending on varied wind conditions, especially if you're close to any of these fire flanks. They're still quite volatile. We are in the middle of wildfire season. Have your resources kind of figured out ahead of time and know what you're gonna need in case you have to travel on short notice. Monitor the official evacuation alerts and reports below and keep your nose to the breeze. Thank you very much for watching.